Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with a video looking at Red Dead Redemption 2. If you enjoy this video, please buy a racehorse, name it Modest Pelican Gaming and train it so that it wins several major international races as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. In 2010, the gaming world was introduced to Red Dead Redemption, the western version of Grand Theft Auto where Ferraris are replaced with horses, baseball caps are replaced with cowboy hats and prostitutes are replaced with well, actually no, there are still plenty of prostitutes in both games. Thank Christ. I loved the original Red Dead Redemption. It was one of the best games that I have ever played. My little kitten actually watched me play. And after a couple of hours, that cute little fucker transformed into a mountain lion. The game was just that good. Eight years later, we now have the anticipated sequel. So anyway, I quickly tell my girlfriend that we are going on break for a few weeks so I can give this game the attention it deserves and I proceed to launch in. The first part of the game starts you off in the snowy mountains and I immediately realise that Rockstar have finally done it. They have finally released a game with better graphics than real life. I spend a good 10 minutes ruining the atmosphere by zigzagging around as I marvel at just how damn good the footprints look before actually listening to what my fellow gang members have to say. I am just going to fast forward through the beginning story section as I don't want to spoil anything but basically me and my gang do cool cowboy shit and now I am at our camp in the forest and the world is open to whatever I want to do. Before I seize the day I have to look the part so I head over to my wardrobe. I contemplate putting on this cloth mask but then remember I am a cowboy not a Batman villain so instead I opt for this gunslinger jacket which I assume is the Gucci of the Wild West. I ride out of camp with the intention of starting my first real mission, but immediately hear gunshots from over the ridge and being the ADD player that I am, I decide to investigate. It turns out that the gunshots are just some dodgy lad shooting glass bottles. As I get closer to him, he challenges me to a shooting competition. What kind of outlaw would I be if I refused his offer? I manage to beat him once and he asks me to double down on my money and so of course I do. This cheeky chap seems to know he can exploit my gambling tendencies. This time we are shooting birds and again I manage to beat him and surprisingly he shows his integrity and actually pays me my winnings. I take a moment to reflect on just how nice it is to see there is still a few honest people left in the world. I then proceed to stab him in the neck with my hunting knife and take his remaining cash and items and get out of there. I have barely mounted my horse before I notice that a train is approaching my position. I am not certain of many things but I am certain that I need to get on that train. Moments later I am galloping beside the train and I proceed to leap over the gap to board it. I have no real plan here but everything I am currently doing feels just right. I find the driver and commit a western grand theft auto by throwing him out of the train. Nothing can stop me now. I inject nitrous oxide into the cylinder intake or you know whatever trains do more steam I guess and then boost out of there after a couple of minutes I become a wanted man it seems that the train driver has reported my crime what a little snitch I should have stabbed him in the neck as well I realise that I forgot to conceal my identity while I was stealing the train and I am also in the huge fucking train that is stuck on the rails so I am not exactly hard to find. I am going to be honest lads and lasses, this was not a well executed crime. Sure enough, the law finds me and I am forced to kill or be killed. The fight rages on and with every law enforcement officer that I shoot, my bounty goes up. The situation is escalating quite rapidly. I do my best but I am out numbered and eventually gunned down. I wake from my death in a slav squat, gazing out over a beautiful lake. I am fined $10 for dying and a bounty of $115 is placed on my head. Given that I stabbed an innocent man in the neck, stole a train and shot a dozen officers, I feel like I have gotten off relatively lightly. I head back to camp and remove my Gucci gunslinger jacket and shave my facial hair down to a moustache to see if I can change my identity and as a result the bounty being dropped. Unfortunately, 
that was a rather crappy idea, but at least I have the added aesthetic benefit of now looking like an 80s porn star. It's time to raise some funds and pay off my bounty. I decide to do this the classy way, by going around and shooting unsuspecting people in the face and looting their corpses. Once I have enough money, I ride over to the post office and say, hey mate, I am that mass murderer who has been going around this tranquil countryside killing everyone to steal their pocket change. And now I am bringing the money I have stolen to pay off my bounty so I can live a normal life. The postman says, yeah, no worries, mate. You're all right on your way then. And I proceed to leave as a free man. And what is the first thing that a newly free man does? Well, he goes straight to the bar to get drunk and pick up girls. I chat to these two lovely lasses that one of my fellow gang members has met, but they proceed to reject me. And so instead I get too drunk and end up in a bar fight. Basically just an average Saturday night on the piss. I knock out a few geezers before deciding that it is actually more important important that I go out and buy a new horse. I head over to the stables and browse the livestock and it becomes clear that I can only afford the cheapest horse because I spent all of my money paying off my bounty. So without much choice, I buy the cheap horse and it prompts me to give the steed a name. Naturally, I decide to call it Ponytar's Puppy. I lead my new horse out of the stable and suddenly have a startling realization. My horse is tiny. I have accidentally bought a goddamn show pony. I am meant to be the most feared cowboy in the wild west and I look like I am the entertainer at a kid's birthday party. I will be out there trying to rob people and they will think I am just the main attraction of the petting zoo. Without much choice, I ride out with my fellow gang member who wants me to help him go and hunt a bear. I secretly hope that the bear eats my disappointment of a horse. We reach the bear's location and begin tracking down the grizzly beast. That's fresh bear shit all right, so we know it can't be far away. We lay down some bear bait and both stop paying attention for a moment and surprise surprise the bear staunches us like it was an Eche Chav lad at a suburban train station. The bear asks us if we can spare a few dollars and a cigarette but I tell it to fuck off and shoot it a few times with my revolver and the bear scampers off. I go back to my friend who says that he is getting too old for hunting. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. The average life expectancy of this era is like 45 years old and you look like you're 100. Go and play some bingo and stop bothering me, you Clint Eastwood lookalike douchebag. He asks if I want to go and kill the bear myself and of course, I say yes. I follow the path to where the bear retreated and pull out my revolver. It's time to finish what I started once and for all. I start opening fire at the bear, landing a few shots. I can't wait to bring this bear home as the meat should feed my fellow gang members for weeks. The bear is strong and rushes me, pinning me to the ground. I pull out my hunting knife in a final effort to slay the beast. But what follows is a brutal scene that truly proves a 400 kilogram wild bear beats a human. All I can think about in these final moments before death is that I should have used my stupid tiny horse as bait instead. Now death really changes a man and I realize that perhaps all of this senseless killing is giving me bad karma. I decide to look for some good deeds that need doing. I find a young stranded lass who asks for a ride and so I agree to drop her back at her hometown. During the trek, I tell her that I would swipe right on her but she says she just wants to be friends. I got friend zoned by an Amish woman and that is definitely a new low. I then stumble upon a friendly bloke and dismount my horse to start a conversation and inquire about what good deeds I can do for him around his humble property. He pulls a gun on me and rudely asks me to leave his property. I decide the good deed doing will have to go on pause for a moment and I proceed to blow his head off. It's hard to be rude without a head, isn't it King Louis the 14th? Anyway, I loot the man's house and find a note that says I can trade three rabbit pelts for two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number, a number seven. seven, two number 45s, one with cheese, and a large soap.
I have only shown you a few hours of condensed gameplay and I limited what I showed because I didn't want any spoilers, but lads and lasses, this is one of the best single player games I have ever played. I can't really give a final verdict yet because I haven't completed the game, but I've gone reasonably far in now and if I had to rate it, I would give it a 10 out of 10. The attention to detail, the story so far, the living open world and just the insane amount of fun things there are to do in this game make it more than worth the money. If you like single player games, this is one you definitely won't want to miss out on. If you want me to do more Red Dead Redemption 2 content, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching you legends and thanks to my patrons for their generous support of the channel. Stay hydrated and until next time and as always, stay classy.